Hello everyone and welcome to the Spatula Castle. Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV. Today we're going to be doing the brand new Final Fantasy XVI crossover event. Let's get into it. A land on fire. The neophyte adventurer seeks the warrior of light. That's me. F forgive me my boldness, but you are Rena, are you not? No. Oh, my apologies. Even if you are the spitting image, I suppose it was naive of me to presume that you were indeed the living legend herself. Just have to keep searching. Oh, that was a short quest. <laughs> I love that I can lie to him. Yes, it's me. I was just kidding. Th then my search is at an end. A begoggled gentleman tasked me to find you, you see, in hopes of entreating your aid with some matter he deigned not share with me. Pray remain here, and I shall fetch him at once. I shall pray remain here. Remaining in progress. Greetings, champion. Oh. Oh, shit. Tis I who employed the young adventurer to facilitate this impromptu meeting. As for the why, I have a request that you, and you alone, can fulfill. Pray listen well, for my tale begins with a most unsettling dream. In it did I behold the evening sky, boundless and shimmering. As I drank deep of its beauty, I spied two stars sailing across the inky expanse, one of purest white, the other blushing scarlet, their courses set such that they might pass without collision. Sharply and suddenly, the Scarlet Star shifted its trajectory. High above a burning landscape did its path intersect with that of the White Star, their conjunction marked by a brilliant explosion of light. Even in slumber, I was awestruck by the, spectac the spectacle. <laughs> but what does it mean? Truth be told, mine own interpretation wavers. My rational mind says, meaningless dream, whilst my artist's soul insists on prophecy. D would you like me to go fight the stars? I can do that, probably. Whatever greater meaning this vision might hold, I am convinced that the blazing white star represents the warrior of light. In other words, you. And should these portents indeed foretell future events, he does want me to fight a star. You are thus fated to encounter the Scarlet Star, whomsoever they may be. I therefore humbly request that you accompany me to the burning land from my dream, that I might witness the vision's denouement. I will compensate you for the trouble, of course. The question is... Which territory in Eorzea might be considered burning, metaphorically or otherwise? Um, just outside the town, I think. Bowl of Embers, the Burning Wall, a place rich in corrupted crystal deposits. They can look quite fiery. Uh, I would guess the Bowl of Embers. It's as burny as it gets, eh? While its relation to flame cannot be denied, mine instincts tell me nay. The scene from my dream was a more rigid than a bowl. A giant flickering outcrop of crystal, mayhap? Of course. Well, yeah, that'd be the burning wall for sure. Ah, that cluster of immense crystals born of the seventh umbral calamity. Ah, it well resembles the sweeping scene from my dream. The first mystery is solved. We shall leave for Eastern Thanalon and the infamous Burning Wall at once. We shall indeed, my good man. Can't believe Yoshi P is here. I wonder what Yoshida had to say about that. Definitely need a more appropriate mount for this endeavor. There we go. The Burning Wall. An apt name indeed. Tis said that these crystalline structures were formed when falling shards of Dalamud pierced the land's ethereal current. Some see them as a symbol of rebirth, 
a manifestation of renewed life. But that is neither here nor there. Let's have a look around, shall we? Spyglass is at the ready. Survey your surroundings for anything out of the ordinary. You may move with the camera you may move the camera as well as zoom in and out. Target an area and inspect with click. Alright everyone. Where's the shoe bill? Where's the ambistoma? Hi. <laughs> How's it going down there? There's a corpse down there, Yoshi P. We need to loot the body quickly. So excited for the orchestrians. Hey, buddy. I was not looting your corpse is what's going on. Don't worry about it. A dream led you to me. I understand how absurd that may sound. We ourselves were unsure of what awaited us here. As for who we are, I'm content to be known as the Minstrel. This stalwart hero is Rena. Might we have the pleasure of your name? Clive. I... The last thing I remember was the ruins. Ah, the fallen ruins. My head, where... How did I come to be in this place? <laughs> to seem you were knocked senseless. Confusion is to be expected. For safety's sake, I suggest we make for town and have a Frontistry's physician look you over. I shall see our patient receives proper treatment. Would you mind waiting for me, for us, at Scholar's Walk? It's quite a walk, buddy. Oh! Teleportaled. Nice. Thanks for footing the teleport fees, my good man. Our foundling is being cared for as we speak, but I'm told he should be released soon. Hopefully twas not that a bite of food and a bit of little bed rest couldn't cure. A bit of bed rest. It was kind of you to wait. Thank you. What of your condition? Much improved. The physiker also noted no signs of injury or illness. Yet my memories remain hazy. How did I end up there? Whatever I was doing, it was important. I'm sure of it. I must return as soon as possible. I see. We cannot leave him in this state. We must help him restore his memories and find his way home. What of the city, Clive? Do any parts of Uldas strike you as familiar? Hmm. 
No. Maybe I've simply forgotten, but I recognize nothing. Hmm, not old on then. Still, I should like to think that the sights and sounds of a well-known locale will hasten your recovery. The Burning Wall, the place where we found you, is situated midway betwixt Uldan and Gridania. Perhaps a trip, to, a trip to the Twelveswood is in order. <laughs> Gridania, you say? The name rings no bells, but I have no better suggestions. And you would take me there? Yeah. I'm gonna get a mount out of this, so... Yeah. Meanwhile, I shall make the rounds of the neighboring settlements, and ask if any have heard of you. Let us rendezvous in Gridania anon. Oh, I love this music. Give me your orchestrians, Clive. This entire situation has me knocked off balance, I'm afraid. Rena, was it? I appreciate you coming to my rescue. Still, you must have your own business to attend to. We can set out whenever you're ready. Clive is ready to travel to Gridania. Are we ready? Then let's head out. This is Gridania the minstrel mentioned. Is it far? We need mounts. By airship? You have those? Not that I mean to doubt you, friend. If you say we're boarding an airship, then that's what we'll do. He's like, holy shit. Rena, if I may ask a foolish question, do these airships of yours actually fly? Yep. <laughs> foolish question indeed, then. Your expression tells me as much. Is there no airship travel where you're from? I know there isn't. So it would seem. It's odd. I know that the weapon on my back is called a sword. I understand what it's for and how to wield it. That's very... that's good. It's not that kind of an amnesia, then. Foggy as my memories may be, my general knowledge seems intact. Yet hearing you speak of functional airships, I felt confusion, disbelief, for something you clearly think of as commonplace. can make no sense of it. Where was I before now? Ah, dwelling on this is pointless. Forward is the only way. Yeah. Let's go, buddy. To feel that bracing wind, the deck shuddering beneath your feet as you rise into the sky? My memory may be faulty, that was an experience I'm sure I'd not soon forget. So this is Gridania. It seems very unlike the city we just left. Where to begin? I think it best if I follow your lead. Clive is now accompanying you. Keep him at your side in order to proceed with quest objectives. You can leave Clive behind, don't know why you'd want to. Oh yeah, we're going on a road trip, buddy. We're gonna be best friends, you and I. This city certainly has a different feel to Ulda. Not only the architecture, but the people as well. This tavern reminds me of somewhere I've been before. No, it's no use. I can feel the memory, but it's like grasping at smoke. But maybe if you were to show me somewhere else. Can do, buddy. Are we going to the etherite by any chance? <laughs> do you need me to pull out the phoenix mount, Clive? I bet that will uh, jog your memory pretty hard. A 
chocobo. Now that's something I recognize. And it's more than that. I had my own chocobo once, I'm sure of it. But as for the when or the where... An impressive crystal? Not a mother crystal, surely. No, not nearly large enough. Ugh, when I try to remember, the fog in my head almost seems to grow thicker. Yeah, they kind of had to give Clive amnesia. He would be freaked out. This is a truly beautiful place. Have you remembered anything else? Uh, brief flashes of this and that, but nothing to suggest I've been here before. I just can't shake the strangest feeling. As if it's too peaceful. And that doesn't sit right. <laughs> I bet. Patrol reporting, Commander. All is quiet with the Ixil. No sightings of Garuda. I should hope not. For which we are profoundly grateful. At ease, soldier. Did he say Garuda? Oh, fuck. You there, this Garuda you speak of. Ugh. Sir, are you alright? Rena, do you know this gentleman? His name is Clive, and he wants to fight Garuda. Memory loss, you say? That too. I'm sorry to hear that, though it seems Garuda's name is lit a spark of some sort. I was in a battle with Garuda. I fought her, I'm sure of it. Please, you must tell me more. Anything that might help me remember my past. Of course, Gridania owes a debt of gratitude to any who have stood against that destructive fiend. Uh, however, there's one more suited to the task than I. Our Elder Seed Seer is well versed not only in primal lore, but also in the treatment of bodily afflictions. She's surely your best hope for recovery. I would send word ahead to Stillglade Fane. Stand ready to escort our guests to an audience. Understood, Commander. Pray, find me at Nothaka's altar in Old Gridania, and I will see that you are granted entry to the Lotus Stand. Dang. The way back to what I've lost begins with Garuda. Of that, I feel certain. The Lotus Stand lies just ahead, if you would follow me, please. So you see, we're not going to fight Garuda, not, because me and Noct already did. Greetings, honored guests. Commander Halo, if that is indeed his name, has apprised me of your friend's condition. This is he? Yep. A pleasure to meet you. I am Kane Senna, Elder Seed Seer of Gridania. I uh, thank you for your gracious welcome. I'm Clive, though beyond that I fear my introduction may be lacking. 
please, concern yourself not with pr proprieties. Tis your memory loss we are here to address. I am told Garuda's name awakened some previous recollection. Yes, in that instant I heard it. A hazy vision of battle rose unbidden. I think perhaps if I could hear more of Garuda. A wish easily granted. Garuda is the deity revered by the Ixil, a people who once dwelled here in the Twelveswood. She appears as a winged entity, half bird, half woman, who commands the wind itself. Most frightening, however, is her capricious temper, as unpredictable as a howling storm. I should add that Rena has fought against Garuda in her primal incarnation. Yeah, I, I stabbed her a bunch, too. A winged woman of volatile temperament with power over the wind. A fitting description of the opponent I remember. But a deity? No, the will behind that monstrous visage was distinctly mortal. Hmm. I suspect Clive's Garuda and Eorzea's Primal are not one and the same. Oh, is that what you think, Yoshi P? Mainly as Clive himself is not of our world. Explain yourself, minstrel. I went back to where we discovered Clive and questioned folk in all the nearby settlements. Not one person recognized his description. Such a distinctive tattoo escaping the notice of every local rumor monger from Malms around. <laughs> Improbable, to say the least. That led me to consider another possibility. One consistent with past accounts I have heard of visitors from other worlds somehow stumbling through Reality's curtain and finding their way to our star. Yeah, that does happen a bit. My brand, it's... It's the mark of a bearer. Does it pain you to remember? I feel the memories trying to surface, but when I strain to recall, a piercing ringing feel fills my ears. Doesn't feel my ears, it fills them. Garuda. Bearer. Freet. Another primal's name. It would seem the pain has a less than tangible source. Long have I studied the healing arts, yet I sense no shadow of illness in your body. Your suffering stems not from injury nor sickness. Victims of terrible events have been known to suppress their own memories out of instinct. One subconscious denies attempts to confront the awful truth, the mind creating a shield of pain to protect the heart. The barrier is of my own making. How then am I to overcome it? With our aid, of course. Fate has brought us together, and together we shall triumph over this adversity. So, you think me from another world? And my memories of said world are not like to return unless I acknowledge some terrible truth. A truth my mind refuses to remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what point this is at. <laughs> Tis a confounding dilemma, I agree, and I have given thought to a solution. I believe that the shackles which bind your mind may yet be struck off in the heat of battle. A drastic measure, perhaps, especially when not at your best. Which is why I turn to you, Rena. You are the twin to Clive's wandering star. Your involvement is no accident. The path I see is thick with thorns, but if you've the will to walk it, then gird yourself for war and await me at Apkalu Ap Falls. Alright.
Clives seems somewhat bemused. <laughs> the minstrel has a plan, it seems, but he shares a little beyond confusing metaphor. Still, I'm willing to indulge him if it means making progress. We're to meet him at Apkalu Falls, right? And where is that to be found? It's, uh, not far, yeah. yeah. Are we gonna fight Yamitra? Oh, we are! We're gonna fight Yamitra! Let's go! This place? Why here? Because this waterfall is where the legendary Archon Louis Soi gathered a band of adventurers in the time of the Seventh Umbral Calamity. I did not think we'd be getting 1.0 lore here. But here we are. Their purpose, to extinguish the infernal Ifrit. Ifrit? Oh? I'm gonna listen to this music for a second. Anyway, if we eat. Ugh. I know something is there, I just. Why can't I remember? Clive recalled several words in the Elder Seed Seer's presence, words which brought him pain. While the significance of bearer eludes me, you and I are more, fam more than familiar with Ifrit. Yeah. Yeah. Stabbed him. My first primal stabbing. Considering your reaction to the mere mention of the name, tis likely that the primal, or its equivalent in your world, is deeply connected to your condition. Thus I've resolved to weave my lyri lyrical magics and bring you face to face with the Ifrit of our world. I see. You're gonna make us hallucinate. Like he does every rising. Here, where Archon Louis Soi paved an ethereal path to the primal's lair, will my words be given substance. And within the vision which takes form, will you do battle with a phantom of our mind's creation. <laughs> Imaginary though this confrontation may be, I fear your suffering will be all too real. Yet you must persevere, for your hidden truth will not be unearthed without hardship. Take heart, Scarlet Star, and call upon the strength of your shining twin. Your past awaits. Duty calls. Let's get it. Yeah, last rising he put me on an airship and gave me a phoenix. He's pretty cool. Where has he sent us? You stand in the Bowl of Embers, the site where the Amalja summoned their patron deity, and the stage upon which the Warrior of Light became a slayer of gods. Tis but convincing illusion, the body of a recounted tale given breath by fanciful verse. Come forth, Lord of the Inferno. Hey, buddy. An accurate facsimile, yet not quite the Ifrit you know. No, not quite the same.
Oh? <laughs> nice. There's our boy. He tall. Time to uncover the truth. All right, time to find out who I am. That's the thing which killed Joshua. Yes, I've been on its trail, seeking vengeance for my brother. This fiend must pay. Fight with me, Rena. Hell yeah! During this battle, you will gain access to special duty actions as follows. Use rising flames to charge the foe and inflict high damage. With the proper timing, you can use dodge to avoid taking damage, even if you are within the area of an enemy's attack. Wow. Certain- <laughs> Wow! Alright! Certain enemy attacks will be preceded by a countdown icon. When this countdown progresses to the dodge icon, quickly use the dodge action. Alrighty. After executing a successful dodge, the dodge action will immediately change to precision strike, which provides an opportunity to inflict additional damage. Alright. This is a bad time to remember. I don't have my duty actions key bound. Yeehaw. I'm gonna be a clicker hero. All right. Nice. Oh, now we do this. There we go. Level 50 Paladin. That's a neat idea. Like that, is it? That is a cool idea. I'd like to pull you back into the middle, but you keep doing these things, you know? 
Come on. Back in the middle. There we go. Infernal Shrouders, eh? Bolstered by the power of flame. Don't get hit even more. Got it. Fetters. Bust him out. Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I picked Paladin. I'm so glad Clive knows how to dodge. Noctis sure didn't. He's gonna get spicy again. Oi. Excuse me. Buddy. Buddy. Do not step on me. <laughs> Cinematic clash. Oh, he's infernal nailing. Infernal sorting. I can just... Oh, dude, he's limit breaking. could just stand in those and dodge them, probably. Let's find out. I'm a paladin. I can take it. Alright. Nope. I can't dodge these. Eh, nah, we scienced.
I was gonna passage of arms us, but level 50. <laughs> I don't think I have Divine Veil either. Nope. Fiery Rampage. Hello. Ah, oh, he's a grumpy boy. Yeah, buddy. I blamed another to spare myself the guilt. I feared that by accepting it, I would lose what little was left of me. But I accept the truth of it now. You're not afraid. I am. Hell yeah. So, you turned into a primal. I have to kill you now. In the battle against your own mind, it would seem you have merged the victor. Intriguing. Whoa. Puppy. Puppy. This dog will follow him anywhere. Anywhere. The illusion is unraveled, yet you've brought a friend back with you. <laughs> this is Torgal, a wolf pup raised in the duchy. There's no more loyal ally in battle, and no keener guide when the road ahead is uncertain. A good doggy. Huh, that would explain the aberration and the lingering ether. Torgal is here to lead you back to your own world. Clive has embraced his harrowing past and in doing so reclaimed the memories he lost, though not a conscious act. 
He's manifested his readiness to return home in the form of a trusted companion. <laughs> Even so, it was difficult to accept what I'd done. My younger brother, Joshua, was a kind and gifted soul. The inheritor of the Phoenix Flames. He was destined to become Archduke, as our father had before him. But Joshua was murdered. His bright future cut short. From that day onwards, I lived for one purpose alone. A dominant of fire had slain my brother, and I would have my revenge. I spent years tracking the killer, until one day, I came to understand it had been me all along. I was young and distraught when I first summoned Ifrit. I hadn't known such power lurked within me, or that it could even exist at all. The transformation was instinctive, uncontrolled. It was by my hand that Joshua died. I can but imagine the anguish this caused you. <laughs> there was anguish, yes, and a guilt I will never escape. But I cannot let it stop me. I was born the vessel for Freet's power, and I need to know why. I was in search of answers that I went to Phoenix Gate and delved into the ruins below. There I found the courage to face my past and accept the truth. And then everything faded to black. Hmm. Your tale suggests that something in the ruins, some mysterious force, was responsible for your inadvertent journey. Allegans. It's always Allegans. And if you arrived in Eorzea from a place sacred to the Phoenix and its flames, well, then it stands to reason. Yes? What are you thinking? I'm thinking that to see you home, we must return to the beginning. Our road takes us back to the Burning Wall. <laughs> Once there, your furry comrade will lead us exactly where we need to go. Morph. That was a cool duty. That was very cool. I liked the duty actions. And I'm very glad I paladined. Alright, here we go. Very appropriate mount time. Such an incredible sight. I was in no state to appreciate these crystals the first time. Borf. Torkel's ears are pricked up, his senses focused on his surrounds. We've come this far. Now, t now Torgel will be, alert, be our guide. Such was the purpose of his creation, after all. Alright. Ready, Torgel? Take me home. Bark. Once you choose to depart, Clive and the Wandering Minstrel will accompany you. Torgal will then begin leading you onwards. Follow Torgal to his destination and try not to fall behind. If you leave Clive or the Minstrel for any reason or lose sight of Torgal, you will be murdered. Puppy! Follow the puppy. Considering at what point in the game it took place in 16, I'm guessing there's not going to be a uh, 14 in 16 side of things. 
Or maybe there will. It will just be in a different way. Before, uh, when they first announced it, I assumed uh, Nectar might have something to do with it, because uh, that Moogle looks exactly like the Moogles in this game. Which, I mean, Moogles look similar across games, but it is the same. Puppy. Bark. I sense the end to this extraordinary tale is at hand. Is this it, boy? <laughs> the tale ends where it began. Where you first found me. Indeed. I was baffled as to why this, of all places, would serve as a junction between our two worlds. But now I think I understand. You do? Some years ago, Eorzea was visited by a cataclysmic disaster known as the Seventh Umbral Calamity. Yet even as fire and ruin threatened all we held dear, the world underwent a mystical renewal. T'was as if our star was reborn. <laughs> One theory attributes the miracle to a benevolent entity, claiming that the undying phoenix flared into being to save us in our hour of direst need. The phoenix? The Burning Wall itself is a scar left by those events, its crystal ridges having erupted from the earth overnight. Some believe these monoliths of solidified flame to be proof of the Phoenix's deliverance. There is also a shard of Dalamud around here somewhere, you know, Louis Swan, mumble mumble. The bond with your brother, the Phoenix of your world, may have been the connection which brought you to the sacred place in ours. Drawn to the flame. Morph. <laughs> Seems our time together is at an end. Thank you both for all you've done. Press on, friend. We're gonna call him friend. Cause we're best friends now, Clive. Always. No matter what fate awaits at journey's end. Now give me your dog. Come, Torgo. We have answers to seek, and Valisthea awaits. And then he was gone. I feel the stirrings of a ballad. But nay, it would be hubris to imagine I could capture Clive's story from so fleeting an excerpt. That honor belongs to someone else. Someone privileged to see his tale to its conclusion. Sadly, the power to peer into other worlds was not granted me by this day's miracles. Yeah. Alright. He's making the joke in-game now. I wonder, however, if you might manage it, Rena. Alright. I'm so glad it was the wandering minstrel. <laughs> this is great. Our little adventure is over. Set in motion as it was by a dream most cryptic, I must thank you for indulging my sudden and strange request. As for your promised reward, I hope this is sufficient. Torgal proved such a trustworthy guide that I thought to bind his likeness to a summoning whistle. 
You can just do that. Make me a set of wings uh, so I can just fly. That would be great. Thank you very much. May his loyal spirit serve you well on your travels. Until we meet again. All right. <gasps> Puppy. Oh. There's all that. All right. Nice. We're done diddly do it. You can now exchange MTP for special items by seeking with the gold saucer attendant at the gold saucer. All right, so that would be where all the... Oh my god. <laughs> I've been doing, doing too much crafting and gathering. All right. Let's use these. Go to the gold saucer real quickly. We're gonna buy all the things. Alright, is there a special vendor or is it just this fellow? There we go. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be okay. I'll use them. It'll be fine. I don't usually do this to my inventory. But I've been crafting and gathering like a maniac. There we go. Give me more. I think we got more music than is on the EP on Spotify. Dang. I think I got it all. Double check. Hey, yep, alright. Good. Good stuff now. The card. Oh, sure. Show me the new ones. There he is. There he is. Heck yeah. Alright. Now we're just gonna go to the mm, somewhere. I almost said spoiler things. Because uh, I know some of you are watching. Probably. I mean, you only have to be to a certain point in this game to do this quest, and I very nearly said spoiler things for this game, but. But I refrained. go here so I'm not going to a spoiler location either I'll just do this here oh, I'm gonna open the box first I should yeah I've got just enough room <laughs> in you go Where are you? Where are you? There you are, Buckaroo. Oh. All right, didn't come with the headpiece. Doip. There we go. All oh, the boots are kind of part of the pants. Interesting. All right, let's see. And there we have it. We have successfully stolen Clive's dog and his clothing. All right, 
Orchestrian. Nice. Hell yeah. All right, let's get this. Let's get baby Torgle out here. Torgle. There he is. According to the wandering minstrel, the beast who appeared to aid the stranded Clive was a guiding spirit born of its master's memory. So impressed was the ever insightful musician by the creature, he decided to recreate a young version of it, which, despite its diminutive size, already possesses the indomitable spirit of the fine hound it will one day become. It's <laughs> a Hildebrand quote. Magnificent. Alright, get out here, puppy Torgle. Oh, look at him. He's great. Come here. Come here, buddy. Yeah! Get you some treats. Get you some pets. Oh my gosh. I love him. He's great. Oh, look at him. Alright, we need to see Big Torgle, too. Summon forth Torgal, a trusty hound inspired by the trusty hound inspired by the memories of the actual trusty hound. Fantastic. That is fantastic. Look at this. Look at this boy. Go get him. Yes. We can pet the Torgal. We can pet the Torgal in two games now. That is fantastic. According to the Wandering Minstrel, the beast who appeared to aid the stranded Clive was a guiding spirit born of its master's memory. So impressed was the ever insightful musician by the creature, he decided to create this faithful facsimile in hopes that it might also serve as your loyal companion. Nice. Ah, oh, he howls. Oh my god. Look at this boy fly. Look at him. And he's not the real Torgal, so we can get away with it. Also, I mean, I didn't think we would, you know, take real Torgal. <laughs> he's got another game to be in. This is great. Look at this boy. Alright. Well, we're gonna leave it at that for today. This is a nice little crossover event. And we have a a big wolf dog to pet and a tiny wolf dog to pet and we stole Clive's clothing and his music this is a good day so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here and I'll see you all next time goodbye <laughs>